Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Gabor Hoichi, and I'm going to talk about everything multilingual in Drupal 8. If you have been to one of my similar sessions in the past two years, I may be saving you an hour here. You may not be surprised by this session, so in that case, I'm totally not offended. P please feel free to move to a different room. No, that's great. In that case, my first question is, who here built a Drupal multilingual site before whatever version? Very good. Who here struggled building one? OK. Let's see if we solve your problems. So uh, I am Gabor Hoichi. I work for Acquia. And I have a good name to test things as well. So this is my badge from a conference. This is my name on a website. And that is my name from a conference schedule. So um, and that's kind of representative of how Drupal, before Drupal 8, treated multilingual. It's kind of an afterthought. It's like it may or may not work. Um, and if, if not, then I'm sorry. So in Drupal 8, we wanted to make this really core in the system. And uh, I've really been at this for a long time. I started using Drupal in 2003, 12 years ago. And I, the reason I started using Drupal because we needed it for a Hungarian web development community site, weblabor.hu. And that was 4.3, Drupal 4.3. And um, it had problems being translated to Hungarian. So I started uh, submitting core patches and trying to get stuff fixed so we can translate it to Hungarian. And now, 12, 12 years later, I'm still working on multilingual problems. So I either suck at trying to solve them or it's just a hard problem space. But the other thing is, the, this is a small piece of what Drupal 8 moves forward with. I think we'll very easily fill in the whole session slot with a lot of interesting things. But I think where this really comes to power is when it's combined with all the other things. Like how the authoring experience improvements combine with multilingual improvements, combine with views, combine with configuration management, et cetera, give you a lot bigger power than you had before. And we'll see a lot of these connections as we go through the different slides. And the other thing I wanted to start with is, although I'm presenting this here, has been a work of a lot of people. So this would be the first page of people who contributed, and this would be the complete set of people who contributed just to the multilingual initiative. This is not Drupal 8 in general. This is just the multilingual initiative. So we had uh, over 1,300 people who were involved in making Drupal 8 multilingual better for you. These are people who uh, commented on things, submitted reports, did user testing. Um, we did a lot of usability testing on what we did um, outside of the official Drupal 8 usability tests. And then they submitted screenshots, they tested bugs, they fixed issues, they submitted tests, et cetera. And we had a lot of fun working together and figuring out uh, solutions to problems ourselves, sometimes very deep in the weeds, uh, sometimes just having fun um, solving our shared issues and sometimes enjoying how far we got. Um, still, we worked on 1,700 issues and about 400 of these are still open. So n probably not all of your problems are fixed. I can lead with that answer. Uh, but a lot of yours uh, should be. So the question is, if all of you worked on those, those multilingual Drupal sites, why would we even want to work on that? It's probably because of the struggle. But for some examples, if you look around the internet, these are all going to be Drupal multilingual sites, different versions of Drupal, all of them multilingual. So this is Total, FR uh, from France. Using Drupal, B Berlin is Berlin's marketing site, is a multilingual Drupal site. Visit Portugal is Portugal's um, tourism marketing site is multilingual Drupal. Canada is using Drupal multilingual to have their tourism uh, experience. Magic the Gathering is um, great role-playing um, 
system using Drupal. There's banks using Drupal. This one in Lithuania is a multilingual Drupal site. DNS Belgium in Belgium is a multilingual Drupal site. The uh, public transport system in Montreal is a multilingual Drupal site. Este Lauder is a multilingual Drupal site. Uh, Cakemail, if you want to send email newsletters, is a multilingual Drupal site. If you watch TV on your computer or want to connect your gaming to your computer, Algato uh, in Germany is a multilingual Drupal site. Pinterest business sites are multilingual Drupal. Nokia's business sites are multilingual Drupal. The, uh, this is the um, fundamental rights uh, site in Europe is multilingual Drupal. The um, uh, World Health Organization site is multilingual Drupal. UNESCO, CERN, the World Food Program, etc. So a lot of people use multilingual Drupal. And these examples, mostly they have the budget, they have the team to work things out, either from donations or from government or from business. But I'm really proud of those sites who are like setting up sites for kids to learn, um, learn computers and learn robotics and learn all kinds of fun things. Because they figured out some multilingual Drupal as well and they used that too. So if we make multilingual Drupal better, It's not just going to save you a lot of time, but it's also going to save a lot of dollar for people building Drupal sites, enterprises. And it's going to make it possible for a lot more self-service communities like these to make their uh, web presence better and, and it, at the start even to make it happen. So the problem with Drupal 7 uh, multilingual and before is that it's very hard and very scattered. So first of all, you want to have languages on your site. So you enable the locale module, and that provides you with some language support, but not a lot. And then you still need to manually download interface translations. So you don't want to do that. You have 100 modules on the site and four languages. That's 400 files to download and keep up to date. It's very tedious. So you enable the localization update module, which automates the downloading of translations. That's nice, but you still only translate the software itself. So you enable the content translation module, and that finally allows you to translate your content. Nice, you translate your content. That makes different copies of your content pieces, but now you want to put those content pieces into menus. There is no way to translate menus. OK, so you enable the IATN module. OK, now you have several other modules that allow you to translate your menus and your taxonomy terms. But now you want to translate your site name or your user email text that you send out to users. That's not possible. So now you enable the variable module. OK, cool, that comes with a lot of other submodules that you enable. And now you want to translate views and web forms. No dice. You need to enable the web form localization module and the IATN views modules. Those are separate downloads. They have separate different naming schemes. All of that hard to find. And now you actually have a shop on your site, an e-commerce site. There is no way to translate anything in your shop with these because they are not nodes. They are not user interface. They are not variables. There's Nothing. So you need to enable the NDD translation module. Now you have two ways to translate your taxonomy terms and your content. But now finally you can translate your store as well. And now your editors will be totally confused as to what's translated how and where and whatever. And then if you want to change some of your English labels, you also need to add string overrides or add a custom English language. And now you have multiple English languages and or multiple versions to tr multiple different ways to translate your user interface. It's a huge mess. It's possible, but it's a huge mess. So we wanted to, instead of having a lot of different ways to solve a problem, have systematic solutions in core so that everybody can rely on having the same solutions. Of course, that required us to figure out a good solution that works for all of the problems that you have. But we uh, tried to do that. So the way we divided functionality is we first set up a pillar or a module called language, which is really just the base services for language support. So it allows you to set up what languages you have, how the language is chosen on the page. It tracks the language of things, et cetera. We'll get into details soon. So that's just the base functionality. And then we have three translation modules. We have a translation module for the software interface called interface translation. We have a translation module for a content called content translation, which has nothing to do with the content translation module in Drupal 7. 
is entirely different. And then we have the configuration translation module, which allows you to translate configuration. So basically, we try to cover all bases. And we'll get later in the session to what's not covered and where you may run into problems. But let's start with the language module. So as I've said, the language module is a base layer where you can manage languages and decide how language is chosen. And we really made a bold statement with moving that at the first step of the installer. So now, in Drupal 8, if you go to install Drupal 8, you get this screen, which is a language selector. And it defaults to the language that was detected from your browser for you. So ideally, if you have uh, your browser configured or your OS configured in case of macOS to prefer your language, then all you need to do is press that button. And the next screen will already be in your language, and everything else from there is in your language. If you are not happy with this one, you can still pick another language. So we have about 100 something languages. So you can pick whatever language you want. And if you pick an RTL language, it will even show up uh, right to left. So in this case, I picked Arabic. And if I um, hit that button, then it will go on from here. It's not really right to left. I think there was, I probably made the screenshot before we fixed that bug. Or with this video. But from here, it's right to left. So um, it will even be right to left, will be translated to your language, etc. So the way we do this is we download the translations live over the internet. So if you don't have internet connection when you test, it's not going to work. It's going to tell you that it's not the, that we cannot download the translation at the time. So you can pick a different language or uh, download the translation later on. So that's what we have in the installer. Uh, so that's a bold statement of supporting language. But the bigger problem in Drupal 7 is we don't know the language of your things. Okay, So there are very few things we know, your lang uh, we know the language of in Drupal 7 and before. We know the language of your nodes, of your path aliases, and your users. And we don't know the language of your menu items, or your views, or your taxonomy terms, or whatever else. Those we have no idea about. So Drupal 7 needs to make assumptions about that. And Drupal 7 assumes that the language of those is the language of your site. And a lot of people run into this problem of trying to starting to build a site in a language, and then you need to hand over the site to a customer. They have a different language. And you want to change the default language. And now all of those assumptions totally fall apart, and everything breaks. So we need to know the language of everything to, for you to be able to dynamically choose whatever you want later on as well. So in Drupal 8, we infinitely extended this. So now we track language on your taxonomy terms. We even know the language of your views, each view one by one. We know the language of your site information, which does not have a language selector on it, but we still know it. And then it works with everything basically on the system. So we have language information on every piece of thing in the system. So if you install in uh, Spanish, and then you need to create three pages that are French, and one of them is a view, you'll need to create that view in French. There's no, there's no reason to create them in Spanish. You create it in French, and it will be there two years later when you decide to translate it to Spanish as well. And the system will know that it was in French. And OK, you can translate this to Spanish if you want. So we'll know of those details. We made this even more flexible for a content, because for a content, um, there's a lot of type of there's a lot of type of content that Drupal manages. In a lot of cases, you can make assumptions about their language. So let's say you have a site where you post articles in multiple languages, but you have a forum that's monolingual, and people will only ever post forum posts in one language. So you would want to enable a language selector on articles and want to set a sensible default for articles. But for forum posts, you don't want to show a language selector that would only confuse users. You want to um, uh, default that language to a sensible default. So we made a configuration page for that, which is a wizard. It allows you to deviate from the core setting of always defaulting to your site default language. You can pick your content would be different, and your custom blocks would be different. And now you can say your content type. Um, the forums will always default to English and will not show a language selector. And then your um, articles will default to maybe also English, but show a language selector. And then I'll leave basic page as is. And then for basic blocks, 
maybe I want to default to English and also show a language selector. But there's all kinds of dynamic selections here, like sites default language, users preferred language, etc. So when you when you take reviews on products, for example, you can default the review type to take a language of the page and not show a language selector, and that would naturally pick the right language uh, that people assume. So this makes it very easy to set up your user interface and default assumptions in the way you want them instead of Drupal needing to make those assumptions. And the other thing that a language module does is um, uses language or provides language visibility on blocks. So you can now hide and show blocks per language. This is extremely useful when combined with menus. All the menus are displayed with blocks in Drupal 8. So you can have totally different menus for different languages with block visibility. Just place the menu block in the same region and hide and show, hide and show them based on language. And then you can translate the menu to different languages for two languages and then show a different block for a third one, whatever combination you want. And combined with the, the ability to place the same block multiple times in Drupal, it's even more flexible. So you can show this uh, block in a different area for a different language if you have a promotion that may apply in Spain, but usually people in France are interested in. You in for French, you can put it up on the page, and for Spain, you can put it down on the page, whatever. So you can make language-based uh, modifications to pages very easily. That's again combined with um, multiple block pa block placement, and all page elements are blocks now. The page title, the breadcrumb, the tabs, the editing tabs, the um, the site branding block, everything is in blocks. So if you need to change something per language or hide or show them or hide them per language, that's very possible now as well. You don't need to go in and edit your code or whatever else. It's very easy to do. And then we made language selection even more flexible as well. So we had URL language selection in 7, but it was not very easily configured. Now we have it all in one place and enabled by default. So when you go in and configure that, then we have the configuration all in one place instead of having it with languages. Now you can review what's what um, or do the domain-based configuration as well right here. It's very easy to see where the different language variants of your site are. Session is the same as before. Um, user as well. The browser detection is different now because Drupal 8 realizes that there are external language codes that not the same as internal ones. So we have a mapping of external language codes to internal language codes. So you can set up mappings for language codes that uh, users may come with, and we still can detect them as the right language. It's very handy. We also use this in the installer, by the way, to make better choices for the language chosen. There is possible now to set users uh, a specific administration language, so they can administer Drupal in a preferred language. And the fallback language is configurable as well, so it does not assume, again, that it would be the site default language. You can set it up to a specific language if you want. That, again, solves the site building problem I mentioned before. And then another thing that we solved is transliteration. This is only built in for machine names, but we now have a feature for transliterating. Whoops. transliterating um, things um, on the UI. So if you enter something that contains foreign characters, like the name of a content type in Hungarian, that would be transliterated to English characters on the fly. And the same happens for whatever language uh, you want to use. This is not currently uh, integrated with file uploads or path aliases, unfortunately. That would be in Contrib or 8.1, 8.2, whatever. It's built in for um, machine names only for now. And finally, for language support, English can be deleted from the system. In fact, if you install Drupal in a foreign language, English is not even added to the system because we can always fall back on the software interface language to English, but we don't need to show the English option anywhere if you don't want to see it. So you can just remove it, and then it's not there. I think it's very nice. So that's it for language improvements. You can delete English. We made the selection criteria for the page language much more flexible. There's block visibility per language. Uh, multiple block placement makes it even nicer. 
uh, combined with language visibility, we have flexible configuration for default content language. We, ha we know the language of a lot more things, and it's first in the installer. Any problems solved for people in these? Yeah? I see a lot of nodding. Nice. And this is one fourth of our improvements for Drupal 8 Multilingual. We are not even at the half point yet. So, interface translation. So, this is now a separate module from language. And the biggest struggle here is all the manual work that you needed to do in Drupal 7 and because you've installed localization update. So we built that into Drupal 8 core. So we not only download the translations in the installer, but for any new modules that you add to the system, we also download their translations on the fly when you install them. When you add new languages, we download all the translations for all the modules you have to that language. When you upgrade a module, we download the translations for the upgrade, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is all built in, all automated, um, and it just works. Um, it might make some people scared. If you want to do quality assurance on your site translations, these automated downloads and imports sounds very scary. They may change terminology anytime, whatever can happen. We have a solution for that too. This can be disabled on your environment. And then we have centralized translation file location, which means that we download all of those translations to one directory. So you can set up your live site to not do the automated translation updates, your dev site or your staging site to do the automated translation updates. You do the quality assurance there, and then you commit those files to Git or whatever your deployment methodology is. You push that up to live, and you run the import ones there on the already quality assured translations. And then everything's um, quality controlled. So although we automated all this, we also thought about those who really want to um, track this uh, closely. We also thought about those who are not happy with their translation team. There are people like that. You, you may wonder. So they would like to modify translations and not argue with the translation team for years on their terminology that they use. Uh, so now you can do that in Drupal 8. You can uh, customize the user interface translations and we protect your local customizations. So whatever you change locally on the translation is marked as customized for you. And the translation updates will not touch those strings anymore. So they will not, they will not be overwritten again with the community translations. And you can export them separately as customized translations and then import them later back manually or with an automated process. Um, to other systems. So if you use the same customizations at different clients or multiple versions of a site or whatever, you can just export the customizations and then get them over to other sites as well. Um, so it's very easy to deviate from the community if you want to. I would still suggest you uh, contribute all the translations that you can. We also made it much easier to do these modifications on the site. Who used this user interface in Drupal 7 to change your translations? Quite a lot, I'm surprised. Because this is a very hard interface in Drupal 7, you search for your things, and then you get a table. There's no user interface to translate anything. There's a summary of the languages available. You click on one string, and then you get that one string in 10 languages. And then you need to scroll down to the bottom of the page where your language is and enter the translation and save it. And then you get back on the other screen and then search for et, et cetera. This is very hard. So in Drupal 8, we realized that maybe people what really want to do is they know one language and they want to translate from source to target and don't care about 10 languages at once. Most people don't know about 10 languages at once, or even if they do, they don't want to translate one string to 10 languages. That's not good. So what we did is we built the interface with that in mind. So now we have a table with the source and target. And we even built in support for uh, plurals. Um, so it's all in line. And then we mark uh, things that you change. So if you go drink some coffee and come back, the changes will wait for you. And then you can save them. And they are going to save those customized translations for you on the site. So it's much easier to use now, easier to search for things, easier to make modifications, and then you can go and, and filter it down to only translated, customized, and you'll see that your ch customized translations are there and are tracked as custom. So uh, much better to uh, make this work. And now you don't need to enable yet another module to change your English interface text. So one of the things that people do is they grab a string overrides module. 
to change their English interface text because they want to change sign in to or log in to sign in or log out to sign out or user account to account or whatever they want um, or my account and we made that very easy in Drupal 8. So all you need to do is you see that okay English is not translatable you go edit English and then you find the checkbox there that says enable interface translation to English. Ta da! Then you save language, and now you have interface translation to English. And I would just click on there, and then you are in the interface translation UI. You can search for login. There's your string. You can modify it to whatever sign in, and then save it. We fixed that bug, by the way, since, again, since I made this video. And then I flip over to anonymous, and then a sign in button is right there. So it's very easy to touch up on English interface text if you want. Um, very easy to modify whatever. You don't need to have any additional module. The reason we don't have this enabled by default is performance. There's a lot of performance thinking behind interface translation. By the way, a lot of caching and stuff. Um, but this one is always better if we don't even try to look up translations if we don't need to look them up. So that's for interface translation. You can translate to English. We have a whole new interface that's much easier to use. You can translate in line. We track your custom translations, so you don't need to bother losing your customizations. However, we always, automate, we always download and update translations from the community. We do that in the centralized directory, so you can integrate that in your deployment workflow and do quality assurance. And it's a separate module, so if you don't want to translate your user interface, you just want PDF files that you track your, the languages of, it's fine. You don't need this module at all. Uh, one thing that's missing here, we also built in, we don't have user interface for, is interface translation fallback. So we now support in the API uh, things like German formal, German informal, where you can make changes to only the strings where, where you need to make changes and it would fall back on the other translation. There's a little module called, I think, translation fallback or something like that. It's already uh, released alpha for Drupal 8 that has a very small user interface to make this configurable for you. That's also very um, uh, performant, by the way. We have made it so that it caches everything nicely. So that's also possible with just a very simple user interface module. We'll probably figure out the user interface for that in 8.1 and just put it into core because it's easy. Content translation. So the problem in Drupal 7 with content translation module is it only translates nodes. And then you enable NED translation and it translates a lot of other things and nodes. And they have two different models. So the problem is not only you have you have two different models, but you have two of them for the same problem space. And contributed modules real, really didn't understand either model. So they either supported one of them or the other or none of them. So we need to have a core solution that works across everything. So the first good news in Drupal 8 is we achieved that. All content entities are supported in this content translation module. And that's not just core content entities, it's content entities general. If you're interested in the development side of this one, then Christian will have a session about this um, later in the afternoon. And he will show you uh, how to develop content entities and fields that support this. So what are content entities? They may be a bit, little bit misleading because content entities may not only be content in the sense you think about content, uh, so in Drupal 8, content entity examples include contact messages, menu items, taxonomy terms, comments, custom blocks, users, nodes, etc. So users, because they have user profiles with fields, they are content entities. And menu links, even though they don't have fields or don't have configurable fields, are also content entities. So usually the way to think about these is either these uh, can have fields or they are created on the front end. Like when you create a node, you may create a menu item as well right there. Uh, or when, you, when users register, they, they are created on the front end, et cetera. So they are not site building elements usually. But all of these definitions are borderline gray. There's no easy way to define them. Anyway, um, on the developer side, people made a choice what's content. So this is the choice they made. 
So we have integrated configuration for the translation of them. And that's built into the same screen that I've shown you before, where you set up the language selectors and whether to show or hide them, what's the default for them. Once you enable the content translation module, that menu item changes to content language and translation, but it's the same menu item. But now it's going to be a lot more interesting because now it's going to have translation checkboxes for everything. So we enabled content and custom blog, but now all of them have a translation checkbox. So I can say articles are translatable, and now I get all the fields on articles, title, author, publishing status, created, changed, promoted, sticky, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. All of them can be enabled or disabled for translation. And then even subfield level for image fields, I can keep the same file, uh, but different alt text and different title text. Uh, that's possible, same for basic blocks, same for et cetera, et cetera. So the good thing about this is it basically reproduces the flexibility of entity translation from Drupal 7. And it also reproduces the capability of node translation from Drupal 7, because if you check all the checkboxes, everything, then it's basically the same as Drupal 7. It just makes copy of everything. Every field has a different value for every language. But then you can just put the scale on wherever you want and set just the fields that you want it translatable and make it very easy to configure. So once you click all the checkboxes here, this is going to be a monster page of everything, but it provides you with a very good overview of what's multilingual on the site and how. And it's very easy to uh, see what's happening. So it's very dangerous to look at if it's already checked, but when you start off, it's just an innocent, innocent list of nice small checkboxes and then it just blows up. Uh, the translation interface is not really much to talk about. It's the same as in Drupal 7. At least it's the same concept. So you have your content entity. It has a translations tab. You go to the translations tab. It has a list of languages. You go to a language, and it shows the node editing form. In this case, the node editing form in 8 is a bit different, but it's essentially the same concept that you've had um, in Drupal 7. We have very flexible permission system here. So you can, in this case, I have node administration permission, so I see all the fields. But if I only have uh, translation editing permissions, I only see the values that are translatable, that a translator would change. So um, it's very easy to customize this in a way you want. And then, once you have all that content, Drupal 8 has views. So now you would want to use views to place things. And the good thing about views in Drupal 8 is it's not just you have views, but Drupal 8 uses views for everything. So if you go to the front page, it's a view. If you go to the recent users block, it's a view. If you look at the new content block, it's a view. If you go to the node admin page, it's a view. So if you want to customize how your content is um, administered, then it's a view. You just add new columns. You just add new filters. You can clone that view and create a um, translations dashboard that has a language column, and then it filters by the language that the user prefers, and they will automatically show the content that the user preferred. It's amazing. Views has two specific features for multilingual in Drupal 8. So in general, views is two things, right? It's a query builder, and then it's an engine to display the results of the query. So these are the two sides for multilingual. We have a side in the query builder and a side in the display. So the query, we have a filter criteria that you can filter for specific languages, in this case, the translation language, but you can also filter to the original language. And that has dynamic values like the, page, the language of the page or the user's preferred language or the side default language or whatever specific language you want. In this case, this is the default front page. It's filtered to the content language selected for the page, so that the default front page is always shows the translations available for the language. And then the rendering setting for the language is how the actual result gets to be rendered. In this case, it's rendered in the content language of the view row as the, in the language found in the view. But you can also render it in the default language of the content found, or the user's preferred language, or the site's default language, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can create views of, of things that are not yet translated to Spanish in the user's preferred language, 
And so if they know Spanish as well, they can translate from their preferred language to Spanish, whatever. So it's very easy to customize these on the query and on the display side as well, um, based on um, these criteria. So now Drupal 8 stores translations differently from 7 and 6. So we'll obviously need a migration path for this that we don't have. Um, so Drupal 8 comes with a migrate module, and it does migrate languages, the, the languages that you have. It does not migrate uh, content translations or a lot of other things. Um, we'll need to work on that sometime. However, some good news. Uh, the core search API, the core search and the search API supports language. So core will index your translations as separate things in core search and will provide translations as separate things on the API as well. And all the node access and TT access stuff supports language. So if you use this translation, then you can sell access to the French version separate from the German version separate from the Spanish version, even though they are stored in the same place. The access system supports access per language to things, to edit them, to view them, to delete them, whatever. OK, so in summary, content translation, node access API um, has language search indexing as separate, and the search API includes support for language. <clears throat> we need to work on the migration path. Uh, it's all integrated in views, so you can customize the language criteria and the rendering with language. It works with all content entities, so if you're going to use rules, you're going to use Drupal Commerce. You're going to use Workbench, whatever. This is going to work with those entities because it's built in the system. And it has per bundle um, and sometimes even subfield level configurability. So it's content type, block type, common type, et cetera level, and then field level and then subfield level. So you can customize it very flexibly in terms of what you want to translate or not. Any problems solved here for anyone? Yeah, nice, very good. So the final one is configuration translation. So this is the one that Drupal 7 and before did not have anything in core to support. And this is where you need to enable IETN variable, um, IETN views, web form, uh, local, web form localization, and a lot of other modules. So here, I'm going to return to this entity's picture and talk about this a little bit. Um, although for configuration, it doesn't really matter that much. But for um, configuration in Drupal 8, practically almost everything that's not content is configuration in Drupal 8. It's the easiest way to define it, almost everything. So things like a view, a vocabulary, a contact category, field, content type, custom block, pla uh, not, not custom block, block placement, or the user email text, site information, etc. So some of them are global configuration, like site info, user email. Some of them are entities. It doesn't really matter for translation. What matters for translation is you need to be in the green or the blue circle. If you write your own module for Drupal 8 and you're using data storage that's not content entities or some type of configuration, you are on your own, OK? We don't have a solution for things outside the green and the blue circle. We have one off solution for path aliases that we inherited from Drupal 7. And of course, the interface translation is stored somewhere there as well. But we don't have a solution for things outside the blue and the green circle. If you stay inside, then we have very nice solutions for you, automated, integrated, at everything. So for configuration, we track language on each config file. So as I've said, we know the language of your views, of your content type, of your field, of your input format, of your editor, everything that's in config. And then we store uh, translations as language overrides. So we don't store copies of your config. We only store what's different from the original configuration. And it's stored in configuration. So when you use configuration deployment, then these translations travel with configuration. So they export with the configuration. They import with the configuration. So it's totally integrated with the deployment system in configuration in Drupal 8. Again, very nicely um, blends with what Drupal 8 makes possible. So for shipped configuration, it's easy to translate because you can use its software translation. So if you want to translate 
this website feedback text that came with Drupal. It's the default contact form. I can go to the interface translation page, configuration, user interface translation, and search for website feedback and translate it to Hungarian. And although this is configuration, it's part of what Drupal shipped with, so it's part of the software interface. So it's going to save that translation, and then I can go back and enjoy my translation once I fit, switch to Hungarian. So everything that came with Drupal is part of the default configuration, and it's translated on localizer.drupal.org, as well as it's translatable with your uh, interface translation module. The good thing about this is every content type, every view, every field, every input format will come translated to German, French, Spanish, etc. once th those teams complete those translations. And then, of course, you're going to create a lot of your own configuration. You're going to place blocks. You're going to change your site name. You're going to create views, etc. So we have translation tabs for all of those things. And that's integrated in your editing. So on the block, there's a translate block local task that I can go and translate the block title to, in this case, Hungarian. So translated that. And then I can, yeah, just see that it worked. Yes, it did. So I, if I want to translate the site name or the slogan, I can also go to site information. There's a translate site information tab. Nice. Again, list of languages. I can add the Hungarian translation and just create the Hungarian translation and save that. So. Config pages will, when you go to config pages, you'll find these translation tabs provided by config translation module. And the combination of those, you'll be able to translate whatever you want, site name, block title, slogan, default contact form, your own created views, whatever you want. So um, all built in. And this, again, the best thing about this is not, not that it all works with the core functionality is everything in configuration uh, is going to support this so long as they provide a configuration schema um, where everything will be translatable the way you expect it in, in place um, at their editing screen. So in summary, for configuration, we have standard translation tabs as a user interface. Uh, we store these configuration translations as config overrides, so it works with your deployment system. Um, and then it works for everything in configuration, not just core. And all the ship configuration is translated, hopefully, already on localized Drupal.org by your translation team, so you don't need to all reinvent the wheel and translate everything in Drupal core. Any problems solved in this one? Yeah, cool. So no need to have all those I18N variable, web form, views, whatever modules, because this just works. So the four pillars in Drupal 8, the language pillar, um, is the base language functionality, allows you to assign language to things, maintains the list of languages available on the site, allows you to delete English and um, do transliteration and language selection in a more flexible way. We have interface translation, which automates translation downloads, makes it much easier to touch up on those translations, it keeps your customizations intact, so they are not overwritten by the community and uh, also deployment friendly with a centralized file location. Then we have content translation, which works across every content entity with one module, one solution that works with uh, contributed modules by default. It supports um, content type, block type, comment type, bundle level, configuration on the field level and on the subfield level as well. And um, supports access by language and integrates with search as well as, as views. And then configuration translation, which works with your configuration deployment system, stores overrides of the translation, so it's very easy to move, and uh, has a built-in user interface to translate everything in your configuration. is also pre-translatable by the community on localized.drupal.org. So that's quite a set of solutions for your multilingual problems, I hope. Question is, what's missing then? Any guesses on what's the problem? No, the problem is these, so we have solutions for stuff. But the problem is, when you look at a page, all you care about is that it be translated to Spanish. If it's configuration or content or interface, who cares about that? Just translate the page. So 
that's not solved in Drupal 8. Because we concentrated on having the underlying solutions to every single problem, um, and having interfaces for every single problem, but having a unified workflow on top of generally content and config deployment and all of those things is was too big of a task. So I, I think you kind of agree that we achieved a lot of things, but we did not work on that um, overarching workflow. However, there's the fine guys at Lingotech who already released Drupal 8 uh, 1.0 of their module, Lingotech, uh, that provides you with an overarching workflow to translate things and integrate this with translation memory and uh, integrate this with uh, people translating as well. And then there's TMGMT, which is more of a Lego approach of different providers of translations and different providers of input. We can also select to uh, feed in all your interface translations, feed in all the config translations, feed in all the content translations, push it out to people to translate or to Microsoft Bing Translator or whatever you want. So this kind of uh, bigger level thinking where you don't really care about what's where and you just want things translated is not something we solved in core and may not in fact solve, but uh, you are not at a loss because it's already there. If you want to get involved, there's the website of the project is at Drupal 8 multilingual.org. And we have a Twitter account at DMI. And what would be really helpful if you would contribute to your translation team if they are not already 100% done? Um, you go to localize the Drupal.org. The front page is a list of all the languages that you can contribute to. It's very easy to join a team and submit suggestions. If you want to just go and try out what you've seen, there's an easy way at simplytest.me. You can just run with Drupal 8.0.0. Everything that I've shown is included in Drupal core, everything. There's no contributed modules involved. You just go and try it out. If you want to work with a demo that has stuff that actually kind of looks like a website, then we have the multilingual demo distribution that is being updated to Drupal 8.0.0. It's not yet but almost. Uh, it has a view in the front page. It's a grid with images and text and language switchers and custom blocks and menus and etc. And a lot of things are translated. So uh, it showcases all of this functionality. Everything is Google translated. So if you kind of think that it's not really nicely done, that's why. Um, but it shows what, what works. It, that text doesn't really matter. So those are all the things that changed. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank uh, over 1,300 people who worked on about the same number of issues um, to make all of this happen. Um, thank you. So we may have a minute or two for questions if uh, somebody has any. Yes? Yes. So the question was, uh, how does ex uh, exporting configuration works if I want to change the site, language, site name in one language? So when you install Drupal in French, for example, it will create all the configuration in French. Uh, the way it does that is it takes all the English configuration from Drupal core. It takes all the translations from localized Drupal.org, and it puts them in the configuration. And then later on, it keeps updating that configuration, by the way as the French team keeps, them up, keeps updating them. So if you install it that way, then it, the French site name will be in your French configuration. So you don't need to translate it to any other language. You just go edit your site name, and it's already French. If you also add Spanish and, and, um, and German, whatever, to the site, then those will be stored in language overrides, which when you export them in configuration, they are in subdirectories. And there are tiny files that have the same name that the site, uh, site settings file. And they are identified by keys. So they, it doesn't matter if you change the original value. The translation will still map to the right place. 
So when you export it, it just exports it in a subdirectory in the zip file, and then when you import it, it imports it from there, and it will keep uh, being connected and stay the same. Yes. So the question was if there's any plans to uh, contribute back when you enter your translations. Um, yes, there's a module called localization client in Drupal 7 and 6 that used to provide this functionality. We started putting that to Drupal 8 and we kind of had very ambitious plans, probably too ambitious, uh, with a fancy nice new user interface. Uh, on the other hand, we also broke the module down to two sub-modules. So now it's, there's a localization client contributor module that's supposed to provide this contribution functionality and the localization client UI module that's supposed to provide the fancy on-page translation user interface that used to be in 7. So it would be easier to complete the localization client contributor module that would just integrate with the core user interface that I've just shown and would just contribute to the uh, localization server. That would be very easy to finish and uh, release. Uh, it's not there yet but that would be contrib. As for whether it's going to be included in core, it would be nice. Uh, I don't know, I haven't tried yet, but maybe we'll try. Yes. So the question was, if you, have, uh, if you have other language specialties, like not just singular and plural, we actually already support that in previous versions. So like their, the interface translation comes with the rules that you set for your language of how many ver variants you have and what the rule for picking which one is going to be used. So that's still in there and it's still supported. So the video that I've shown for Hungarian, we have two variants. But for Polish or Russian, there's like six of them. And that's totally supported already. And that was supported in previous versions as well. So we haven't uh, changed that in any way. We haven't made it better. So for things where you would need to program programmatically make some changes, we don't have a solution for those things. But for interface translation, plurality differences, we have that uh, as much as we had before. Yes. So the question was, have we improved the uh, configurability of the language switcher block? No. Uh, we have an issue for that, to, make, to add options like make it a select box or make it just the language codes or uh, display them in whatever, I don't know. So there's an issue to, make, um, to have options there. We, don't, we haven't gotten anywhere there. So we don't have a solution for that, unfortunately, no. I think CS, I think, Having language codes would be possible with CSS only because we have it in the markup. So you can pick it out from the markup, the lang, the lang, lang tags, the lang attributes. But the, any uh, other customizations, not so much. OK, anybody wants to go and do a Drupal 8 multilingual site? Yes? Cool, nice. Thanks for coming and enjoy.